Hello YouTube, it is Murrowmensch. I am posting this video just as a general uh, account overview for what I'm using in Arknights, what I've built up over my time playing, and also just some general base strategy stuff that I wind up using as I play the game. So let's get right into the operators. Who do I use? We got a pretty good crew right here. Finally have a full page of E26 stars. This took a while. Um, and if you look, it immediately drops off. Finally got Mountain and Mudrock and Aya. Those are in progress. I just finished getting Blemishine promoted. So th there's still some work here. Don't worry. I know how good some of these six stars are. They just have not shown up until very recently. So, anyways, from the top here, you'll notice I've got two max characters. These maxes came in when the offer was available to buy the max level six star item to take it right up to level 90. Um, obviously, I bought the one when Texas Alter was available to immediately get her to the full level and powered through her module and getting M3 on skill 3. The potentials, I pulled 3 copies when I went ahead and pulled to 300 to spark the lovely... Scotty, the Corrupting Heart. Um, yeah, wailed a bit at the beginning when I was first playing. El Kozano was the first limited banner that I was participating in. I wanted some really good units, and I'm willing to put money into a game when I know I'm enjoying it, I'm playing it, I want good things. So, this was probably the heaviest whaling session that I did in this game, was to make sure that I got Texas Alter and got more potential for her and got Scalter while I could. Um, but if you notice, I'm at potential 5 for Tex Alter. Good old Texas the Omen Toaster, as I like to call her. I used Contingency Contract Potential Specialist Tokens and the four that you get from Integrated Strategies 2 to get her up to potential five. Um, and use that because I wanted her to be as powerful as possible, increase that talent, and get as much as I could out of her. Hopefully I eventually get the last DP cost reduced, but she has been amazing, and I do not regret using those Royal Specialist tokens on her at all. Now you notice the other max 90 people might go why hoshiguma i wanted an immovable object to go with my unstoppable force of omen toaster um definitely could work on some more mastery here but when hoshi can survive the massive nuke that comes down in the one contingency contract where you have the orbitable orbital uh orbital missile that smacks and basically kills whatever operator it's focusing on with ice block count. Hoshi survives that with with this setup. So anytime I'm in a position where I need know I need to stall out or know I need a defender, that's why I did it for Hoshi. I wanted a no question she's going to be able to block everything until my DPS can take it out. Like she is a final line and there has been times where she's been invaluable, especially CC12. As people realized, she was the one character who was going to be able to stand up to those insane contracts that buffed the Hateful Avenger as much as they did. So, very awesome. Not the flashiest. I do not use her all the time. But when I need her, am I glad I have her? Do I recommend you do what I did? No, I recommend you enjoy the game however you want to play it. So there's some options here that are definitely meta. Um, 
and there's other options. We'll go into level instead, as you'll see. Fire Whistle replaces that. There's some other options that you might not ever consider for your account. You might never bother with Cruz the King Glint as a sniper. You might not put up Profuso after you put her to Elite 2 for her base skill for the trading post. I decided to go further than that and give her more upgrades because I wanted more things for the integrated strategies. Uh, Gray is definitely a more unique option that other people aren't going to touch. The fact that his deployment cost is 22 because of the module was great. I like using him and slowing things down sometimes. That extra bit helped a lot more in my early to more mid game. Now that I'm late game, I still don't use him as much, but again, integrated strategies, I get another caster option that's actually very valuable to producing a team without using too much of my hope and recruitment options um, in order to make sure I can get other characters or if I'm just low on hope, then I can still get someone who's going to do work for me. I don't see myself ever making the Mastery 3 on his skill too because I don't use him that often. I could definitely use the resources other places. Eventually that may happen, but he's been doing great work for when I need him at the level he's at. Um, so yeah, you're going to have your own choices for sure. I've made mine. I like where I'm at. Let's go through just swapping through a lot of these so you can see overall where my priorities are. Yes. I pulled Inez and it was a struggle for like four or five days to get her promoted because I didn't have everything right away. I don't really have a lot of pre-farming done when I do these. Sometimes I'm lucky and have things, sometimes I don't. In her case, I didn't and had to work on it. Um, and got a little bit of mastery on the two skills that she really needs. Do like her bind, do like her invis reveal. And the skill three is just a really wild thing to work with. So I'm very happy with Inez. It's the first time there's been like a new six star and that's the only six star rate up on the banner where I was like, okay, I do need this operator. I do eventually plan on doing like niche nights with the fast redeploy tag. So how could I not have Inez if I'm building an entire fast redeploy team? It's necessary. Uh, we go to Chong Yu, who... I didn't go too hard on this banner. I did pull like 60 to 70 pulls, I think. And when I pulled them, I'm like, great, at least I have them. I don't have to worry about them. And then I actually started using him as a lane holder. And he is incredible. Very glad to have the Mastery 3 on the skill 3. Um, I do want to find more teams and uses for his skill 2. That's what I put some work into at first, because that is a whole lot of damage, but it's extremely niche. You have Chang Yu, you're probably just fine with going for skill 3 mastery, do go for M3 on that. If you ignore S2, it's very situational that you're going to use that. You have to have other units built specifically to do that, um, but that's something I want to play around with and have fun with. Uh, and branch off into different things and different strategies for sure. Surter was one of the earliest six stars that I got for my account. Uh, very happy to have her as a Hello Drop boss killer. You know Surter. No question that she's M3. Thorns, I did not pull until like two or three weeks ago. My boy finally came home. He's one of the characters I wanted the most. The moment I got him, it was stop the presses, stop everything else, get this guy made. Yes, he's meta. It wasn't even just meta. I just like lords. The lords are cool. Laplin was like my first five star and I built her up immediately. And to finally get thorns and have that option and have him as a lane holder or just an overall dps unit he is a machine so glad to have him and eventually i'll get that from m2 to m3 for his skill three just resources have been been abundant for my account there's been other things i'm working on and this has been good enough for what i've been building eventually i want the m3 but currently has not been absolutely necessary for the clears that I need to clear. Penance, 
obviously I got two of her, as you can see by the potential, when I did the 300 pulls on the Omen Toaster banner. And I didn't have Mudrock at the time. I really wanted a Mudrock, but then when I pulled Penance, it was like, oh my god, I, I have a Juggernaut. And both her S2 and S3, even though I only have M1 on each of them, both of them are amazing. They're, like, every time I select Penance, it, I do think about which skill is better here. And it's clearly one or the other. Both are very useful. In time, I will get the Masteries up for both of these. But even so, at the E260, at the uh, Mastery 1 on each of these, Penance has done what I need her to do. So I haven't rushed it. You don't need to drop everything into Mastery if your operators are performing the way you want them to. And Penance definitely has. Arketo, you're going to notice something here. Why do I have the module? Everyone universally agrees that the module for Angelina and for Arketo are not as good. Like, why would you put the time and effort into this? For me, personally, it isn't the greatest thing. And this will never be stage three because the amount of cost to get to stage three for how little it improves the module is definitely not worth it. This is not one I will ever go back to, but I am still glad to have the stage two module on her to give her that extra skill points, give her that shield um, that has helped out. It definitely does. <clears throat> um, but yeah, very, very much like her. Gotta work on that mastery eventually. My only problem is I constantly have Arketo in a team with Proviso, so she's either in the trading post or she's healing so she can go back in the trading post. Because I run 2-4-3, I'll get into that with the base and everything. I know it's not as good as 2-5-2, but I will explain that when I go over to my base in a minute. Her ability does give plus 40% because I have fully upgraded dormitories. So she's been amazing to make sure that Proviso has a, as much extra percentage as possible to get those orders in with Proviso's base skill. Um, but as, And as far as play goes, I think I do want to increase mastery on skill 2 as well. There are times where that's extremely useful. There's still some clears and some autos that I have that use that ability. Um, I feel like there's more times that I can use that than I'm currently using, but it's still very great. Uh, but yeah, default, if you just use skill three, you're going to be fine. You're getting that extended range. You're getting targeting two enemies with a little bit more damage on each and really blasting them out. Very, very solid standard sniper. And I'm glad to have her, especially since I don't have apple pie. I don't have Ixusia. If I had her, maybe I'd have a different tune about Arketo, but I still really like Arketo. And she showed up when I was doing all the pulls for the Tex Altar banner. So I was glad to pick her up and get her uh, worked on at that point. Um, Far Tooth was a more recent pull. Uh, somewhat recent, but took a while for me to get to her. There was other units I was working on, and I don't use her too much, but when I do use her, I am very glad I built her. That S3 does a ton of damage, and the fact that you can stick her across the map really opens up possibilities of damage potential on lanes that other characters just are not able to do be it you're putting them into a dangerous spot where they're going to be killed before they can do enough dps to do what they want them to do or just angles and the range it really helps out like there's times where like i have pazemka right here where she does an insane amount of damage but she has to be close range or you have to be able to put her typewriter down and be able to get that she covers a lot of things Far Tooth covers what Pazemka can't, and sometimes it's good to have both of them beating down on the same lane, on the same enemies, in order to just eradicate their health. Very good. Um, if I would not recommend Far Tooth as like one of your first six stars or first sniper six star promotions. Um, 
not, at least not very early on because she is more niche overall. Her skill two is quirky and kind of cool that you get global range for anyone who's blocking. Um, so there are times where that's going to be useful. I haven't really used that, but then again, I have other units like Golden Glow that cover that kind of niche. Um, so it hasn't been essential for me to use. So I'm probably underutilizing Fartooth. At the same time, the fact that I don't go to her all the time does speak to she's not horribly essential for like a base team. As you have more units, like I already had more six stars and five stars and four stars built to E2, by the time I went to Fartooth, I'm like, yes, now I can add this extra weapon to my arsenal to pull out when I need it, rather than I I would never say I need Fartooth as one of the first units I build because I'm going to use her in every stage. Not really the way that I feel about her. Still very glad to have her. Um, eventually going to work on module but very solid unit overall. Now let's talk about Pazemka, because she just wrecks damage on anyone who dares bother her while she's reading. Uh, this skill does eventually get to go to M3. It's costly to go to M3. And again, Pazemka does have base skills that I'm constantly using. Um, so that's... Like, whenever I have the gold lines set up um, for my 243, I swap between using three battle records and one gold or three gold and one battle record. And I'll go over that when I'm in the base. So, when I have the three gold lines set up and I can set up uh, Doran, Myrtle, and Chestnut in the base, eventually I'll get Minimalist and that will increase that even more. Um, I can run them and run Pazemka in the base, so she follows the same problem that our kiddo has. I'm constantly using her, um, so I don't have the time to put her in the training room. I don't like missing out on that opportunity. But that's that's a small price to pay for how much damage Pazemka deals, and I don't even have her module unlocked yet. That That will eventually come, but again, she's doing the work without it it's not been entirely essential. So when people say, like, oh, you, you're better off building new characters rather than working on masteries and working on modules, this is a realization of what they're talking about. There's a reason I don't have module on Vartu. There's a reason I don't have module on Pazemka. Yet, they're working. They're doing what I need to do. What's better off What's than working on those? Building Mountain that I just pulled. That's definitely going to be a better use of my time and grinding and resources and my sanity to get Mountain working and have that unit available than adding more stats to Bazemka. Now, I do have other modules. I do have masteries done to an extent to help with the damage output and the other abilities that these operators have. For sure, I feel there's a mesh and a balance that you need between them to get what you want. But I do see that the priority should be, if you have other characters, other operators that are good, that you haven't worked on, that's where your energy should be prioritized and all of your resources, rather than just the modules or the masteries. But do not forget about your masteries and do work on those if you feel your operators aren't doing as much as you thought they would. Some of them need it. Like Thorns, he needs at least that mastery too to be as powerful as he should be um, and to really deliver this almost solo carry experience. And Bazemka having her S3 at M2 has helped with making sure her typewriter deals more damage, she deals more damage, she just wipes out waves when I activate her skill and it has a better uptime because of the mastery progression. So find that balance. Make sure you have enough units before you start diving into just a couple units and getting them fully mastered out if you're earlier on. Uh, Kaobi, I think is how you pronounce it. I, I see her name and I think of Phoebe, P-H-E-O-B-E, -E, and then want to say C-B. But it, if you call her K, she wants to be called K, so Kaobi, I think everybody pronounces it. Whatever it is. She has really hot knives, and those really hot knives 
tear through people, and it's amazing. All of her skills are very different, too. Um, she's a very recent uh, E2 for me. I just finished Blemishine, before that was Inez, before that was KOB. So, rather recently, I ha wanted to build up Inez, I wanted to get Blemishine done, so that's why I haven't touched Masteries or Modules. I want to look into it. KOB just got a second module, so I want to make sure I'm picking the right one. I'm going to do some research. I can fully admit I don't know which one is better. I want to look into other people's opinions before I make that judgment call myself. I advise you all who are watching this do the same. Reach out to other content creators in this space for just how to learn what's going on with this game. Um, when I started, I needed to look up guides on how to beat some stages, especially with the lower units that I had before I could build things up. And watching those clears also helped me understand what some good strategies were. This game does not tell you what good placements are or how to figure that out. So watching a lot of other people's clears, watching tutorials on how to get some things cleared, really built up my skill set. It was like being in a class to learn how to play this game better, to then also have the confidence of my own placements. And now I practically don't use guides. Uh, in the limited event for Chang Yu, that story, when uh, where the vernal winds blow, there was only one stage that I used a guide for, and it's not one that you'd be expecting. A lot of people had problems with the challenge mode final stage boss. I actually sat and grinded that out, and that's one of the few clears I have posted on this channel, because I figured that out from scratch myself without watching anybody else really take that on. I figured out myself that... Angelina was going to slow down the dual bosses enough to make sure that I could get other damage in. I figured out that Cantabile or Cantabile would be able to face backwards to cover the spot in front of where Hoshiguma would block those enemies. So they would run right through her because of the minus one block, but then get stopped by Hoshiguma and still have the damage being dealt in the whole time. There are things that I got to do, but I would have never been at the point that I am if it weren't for watching other people play and getting an idea of what they were doing. So I'm definitely going to do that for KOB here, for the modules. Um, I know personally, without even going into other information, I'm going to work on her skill too. I feel like her S2 is her main skill. That's the biggest damage skill. But there's value in her skill 1 for the uh, bind. Um, there's value in the physical damage swap that her skill 3 does. She's a very complicated and interesting unit. Um, and I feel like S2 is the most brain-dead easy way to go with her. It's like big damage number goes up, attack goes up. You don't have to think too hard. That's a very solid way to go. But there's so much utilization available for her. And looking into other things is going to help me with that. But glad to have her. And definitely glad to have her for the base. Um, Golden Glow. I bought one of these six-star selectors. And I wanted either Horn or Thorns at the time, and I asked my friends who play, again, that reaching out, other people are gonna know and help you make good decisions. I reach out and like, guys, I have Surter, I have these some of these other powerful units. Here's what I'm thinking. I kinda want Mudrock, even though like other things happen, like Mudrock I wanted, and then I pulled Penance, and it's like, okay, Mudrock doesn't make any sense for the Selector anymore because I pulled another Juggernaut. Who's gonna really help my account when where I'm standing here? And four of them immediately said, you should pick Golden Glow. I was like, I don't even know who this operator is. And I went into the joint operation banner because this was around CC11, I think, when that came out. And I saw that Golden Glow was on there. I'm like, I'm going to do a 10 pull here on this banner. And if I get lucky, I get lucky. And I pull Golden Glow. If I don't, then I use the selector on Golden Glow. But if I pull Golden Glow, then I can just use Thorns. I'm, I'm going to use it on Thorns because I've wanted them. Um, 
I did not get Golden Glow. I did actually get two six stars. That's when I pulled Fartooth and it's escaping me what the other one was. I got two six stars in that 110 bull in the joint operation banner. Neither of them were Golden Glow and I said, okay, let me pick up Golden Glow and she is amazing. <laughs> Her skill three is a little quirky to get used to at first, but honestly not difficult to get adjusted to. Um, very good to just be able to clear out a lot of things and help clear out the entire stage of problems to help support your other units. I do want to work on the skill two more so I can have her as a set place, but honestly, that's kind of what KOB is doing now when I know I need one person who's sitting in one area and covering one specific range. I want to use KOB for that and her skill two rather than work on golden glow skill too when it's better that i have someone who can do damage in a small area but then be able to spread that damage out to support in other areas and clear out like you have one enemy or two enemies that spawn in one corner of the map that you have to handle isn't it so much easier to activate golden glows s3 and just let those drones wind up taking those small enemies out then have to devote a whole nother deployment slot just to take care of those couple units sometimes yes it's weird to get that timing down or find it sometimes but it's very helpful in making your placement of your units more forgiving or easier and she's just an adorable cat i i, I love it when she marches with her trumpet in this alternate skin that's another good joy uh moving on to angelina so when I started way back in the day, because I started within the first like month or so of launch, played for a few weeks and then stopped playing and only picked up the game this again this past April and then got really into it. But when I first started and I pulled on my starter banner, I pulled both Siege and Angelina in my starter banner. Two six stars. And at the time, Siege was amazing. Worked on her. Angelina is the one I actually wound up promoting to E2 when I came back to the game. Just very different unit. Um, do I recommend everybody build an Angelina? Probably not. Do Am I happy that I have her available for that slowdown and that AO, basically AOE, it's five targets, that AOE ability um, to and the levitation? There's a lot of unique things going on with Angelina that other characters don't touch, or at least not aren't all in the same package. She's great. Um, again, like with Arketo, this is another module. I am never putting this stage three just because the resources do not give enough for what that level of the module does. But I'm still okay with where I have her at with this anti-gravity module and what that does do to help um the uh, the attack speed buff is not a lot but every little bit does make a difference um but not enough of a difference that i recommend this to everybody this made me happy do what makes you happy even if it's not the optimal thing is what i have to say about angelina and using angelina has made me happy and has been very supportive to my account Scalter. I don't need to talk too much about this seaborne disaster. Uh, absolutely remarkable S2. I gotta try out her S3 from time to time. I have not bothered with it. I've had other damage dealers and everything where I have not considered her S3. I've had other things to cover and solve those problems without having to try her S3 instead. Her S2 is her main skill. You're using her as a, as a damage buffer and a... Uh, a healer, especially for units like Penance that, and your Juggernauts and your Musha units who cannot heal naturally. She still restores health to them. Uh, so she's been very helpful for Penance. Um, and just in general, as a healer option, uh, I that's what I use her for the most. I definitely feel I am underutilizing her by only using her in that role. But oh my god, is she remarkable in that role no questions asked very very satisfied that i went ahead and sparked for her and got her into my account when i had the opportunity um and that i had the ability to spare that extra income into this game in order to do that uh very happy with her then of course kieran are 
Yato. You guys saw my struggle bus and pulls for her. Thankfully, I did not have to spend any money on her. I just wanted to make sure I won copy. As you can see, her potential is at two because I went back after that video and I had pulled some more pulls in the, like the week of week or two weeks of the event and managed to get a duplicate. So reduced her deployment cost by one more. That helped. Um, as you can see, the mastery isn't very high because I actually haven't been using her that much. When you have Texas the Omen Toaster and you have other units really doing the fast redeploy assassin role, I haven't found as many places for me to use gear. And so why would I put time into the masteries when I'm not using her like that? Um, eventually, like I mentioned earlier with Inez, I'm making a fast redeploy team. Once I have more characters at E2 for that fast redeploy team and can actually have a full squad uh, available to do fast redeploy clears, that's when I'm going to make sure I get masteries up. <clears throat> I need her S3 mastery because this does hit aerial units and there's not many fast redeploy units that do hit aerial units. Thankfully, the three agents of Cantabile, Puzzle, and Inez will all hit aerial units, and you have Tex Alters S3 will also hit aerial units, but that is it if I don't use Yato Alter. So I definitely want this S3 to be upgraded when I go down that route to be able to handle any aerial enemy problems I may have without losing my clear to something like that. So in time, that's going to be more important. Right now, she hasn't been using the overall six stars that I already have and the other strategies I've been using has been more important. Is it that Yato is disappointing? Absolutely not. I just have not had as many situations where I've needed to use her. And when I have used her, how much I've invested into her has been enough for her to perform the role that I've needed. That's been enough. That's been great. Going on to Mizuki. Went with Mizuki on the recommendation of somebody else. Very rarely pull Mizuki out, but I'm extremely happy with the base skill and how much that has improved my factory production. And when I do find a Mizuki box on the stage, a good place for Mizuki to just be dropped down and hit a lot of tiles and get a lot of extra DPS on an enemy space, it's been great. So, do I see myself working on Masteries or Module for Mizuki? Probably not. But does Mizuki work for what I need him to do? Absolutely. Glad to have him around. Just as glad to have him in the base. So maybe that's not the best indicator of whether or not you should upgrade an Operator to E2. But this, this has been okay. I got my return on investment. I've got a solid unit that can is the only unit that I can use in these situations because I haven't built Ethan. I've not bothered with Ethan as an ambusher. I bought one of him, but do not actually have him upgraded. So Mizuki covers that role um, when that kind of role arises, which is honestly not that often, um, but very useful when he does. Good little dude. And thank you for producing a lot of base materials for me and, and empowering other units to get more production out of them. Phantom. So I would regret Phantom if it weren't for the fact I was building a fast redeploy team and it's because of power creep. A lot of people have talked about this a lot. I'm not going to go too much into it here but Phantom has been power crept out of usability in standard teams. When you have Texas Alter, when you have Yato, um, why would you bother using Phantom? There really isn't a place for him, unless you're only using fast redeploy tagged units. So in my case, if it weren't for that, I'd be regretful but he still does have that home. It's nice to have that second Phantom that deploys that can also be another unit once he's on the field. So you get a lot of value out of him there. He's still good, but when you compare him to what has been recently released, he does not stand up, which is unfortunate. Sorry, boy. If there's one six star that I would say I regret making E2 
right now it is phantom um but i'm gonna make sure i get the most use out of him out of that niche team i'm working on and then finally blemishine how much do i have here oh i can i can go 46 now nah, we do multiples of five here for the levels um most recent e2 literally finished her this morning got that f full first page and that's what made me want to make this video um very glad to have her for penances s3 is the main thing um but she just has a very interesting kit using that skill too has been great just an extra stall uh extra ease of just healing herself like i i still use my gummy and blemishine is another much better tank uh, for that guardian subset subclass if you will um i've been very happy with her even just at e180 i've already been using her and putting her into teams making sure that penance can charge things up and sometimes even without penance just having her as the defender and a support healer for a small area has been good enough um so so happy with her definitely happy with her we're gonna back out here so that's the first page um we go into level i'm noticing how long this video is already getting so i'm not going to go into full breakdown of everybody else uh but i will touch on everyone else who's e2 here to an extent at least the important ones fire whistle is amazing she's gonna get her m3 on the s2 for sure um very glad to have a potential five of six of her overperforms every single time i need her to and for not having horn and for fire whistle dealing arts damage with those fires very very good unit has unique placements bring her to a lot more stages and other niches that i use very awesome um cantabile has been my main vanguard for dp production have her s2 m3 um amazing partnered her with myrtle all the time for stages just to get that dp cost out um when i need to get bigger units down faster R remarkable um specter is great specter is the one i use the five star selector on again at the uh suggestion of friends and just s2 m3 Perfect. She lane holds for me in very different situations. I'll be glad to have Mountain to be able to cover that lane holding a bit better. Um, but Spectre has done a fantastic job of handling those roles uh, up to this point with my account. Um, Laplin's great. Proviso I don't really use that much. Silence has been my only healer. I have not pulled any other like good 5-star, 6-star healers. Um... So Silence has been doing the job along with Skalter for me. Cruz is just my waifu. That's that's it. I love her. When you put her into a team, she says, Hi, everybody. I'm here to slack off. I'm like, you are my spirit animal. And I love everything about you. So she got that nod, even though I don't use her that much. I don't regret it because she deserves the world. Laplin's crazy as hell. And I love her. And you need that Silence so very happy to have her gonna eventually level her up as well amia carried in the early game um and i'm glad i only did the breakpoint s2 m1 mastery for that it does increase how much s2 does for you by a lot and i'm happy to have it but i basically don't use amia anymore and i We'll eventually clear some of the story stages for that. I've been working more on Chapter 9 than I have been working on, like, completing Chapter 6. I'm, like, just past halfway in Chapter 6. Um, I've been doing so many other things. but And that's the thing. Enjoy this game the way you enjoy it. I've been enjoying it as I've played it more for the story events and sometimes with contingency contract. Like, I really went into that on CC11. Playing in integrated strategies. Playing other games as well i haven't been worried about hyper diving into all of the content here from time to time i pick it up there's a lot of stories that i get to go back and play for the originate prime and just to know other stories of what happened with all these characters so yeah amia don't have her alter unlocked i know that she winds up going guard mode with the sword and everything amazing don't have her unlocked her caster side is good for early game does fall off 
Myrtle's a beast. I don't need to talk about her. Honeyberry's one of the best wandering medics, especially since you can get her out of this shop and build her up. Obviously, I have her built. Gummy, uh, if you listen to Supa at all, you already know to max out your Gummy, so do it. She deserves it. She went through a lot in Chernobog. We don't talk about Chernobog. But look at this girl and do what you should for her. She deserves it. Uh, we have Phantom Red is, again, fast redeploy. Click was a great caster at a cheap option earlier on in my gameplay before I had Golden Glow and only had Ami as the other caster support. I went with Gray and Click. I even started building up Katano, and I'm glad that she's E1 for the uh, clues in the base. But other than that, like, I hadn't really used her up, so Click was great for a while. I basically almost forget I have click now. Maybe you won't put as much investment into click as I did, but early game, if you want to make click E1 because you don't have other options until you do get options and to cover you for progression, click will do some solid work for you. She's all right. Um, Gravel, she is something else, yeah. Every time I see her in recruitment, she wants to kiss me. That's a little weird, Gravel. You need to learn proper work-life balance and workplace boundaries, even if that is how you greet everyone. I don't think it's appropriate, but we can talk about that later. Um, Vermeil has fallen off a bit for me in actual utilization and stages, but like Click, they definitely carried me more. Maybe I wouldn't put them up to stage three module at this point. I did that very early on before I had like other six stars built and really knew other options that were better. But Vermeil has really helped out and yet yeah, and enables some powerful base strategies for sure. Um so definitely worth it. Even if I don't pick them up that often anymore. There are times where you just need a lot of snipers. I'm glad I have Vermeil to do the double hits with the skill too, um, and to take out a lot of drones. Very good for trash mob stages. Still glad to have them around. Um, yeah, we won't go too much into who I've maxed at E1 max level. There's some options here. There's a reason a lot of these have not been promoted yet. Just general not use or their niche is too niche for me to need them yet. Or just haven't gotten to them like in the case of Kafka that will eventually be promoted for the fast redeploy team. Um, Siege. It's unfortunate. One of the first six stars I ever had and I don't think you're ever going to make it E2. But maybe one day. We'll see how I feel. I'm going to do what I enjoy with this game is, again, what I want to reinforce. Um, there's a lot of other units here that get to have more attention. Puzzle's going to get it for fast redeploy for sure. And some of them that I gave attention to and then just fell off. Like, I had Moose and Haze and Matterhorn very, very early game and got them up to E0 max level and then just never touched them again because there wasn't a point. These two stars and these one stars... I just max them because that's extremely cheap, and then you get better base skills out of most of them. Like, Doran, Nor, and 12F were absolutely worth that little bit of investment just to get their base skills up. Um, and then, yeah, we go into these other rarities. I'm not going to dive any further down here, but Rest Assured, Mountain, Aya, Mudrock... Most likely, Fiametta and Dorothy will all see their time in the sun. Um, it's just going to take some time. You know how the gotcha grind is. But I've definitely wasted enough of your time. This is where I'm starting out with my operators and what they look like and why I've chosen them. This video has gone on long enough. I will dive into base stuff on another video at this point. But thank you for watching. Hit the like button if you liked it. Comment down below if you think I made some dire mistakes with some of my operators. Or to share in your experiences of learning this game and what choices you've made. I want to hear from you. I want to know why you chose the operators you chose. Is it just waifu basis? Is it that you like this one strategy and like this one way of playing and they enable that? Definitely tell me. 
I'm paying attention. I'm on YouTube often enough to see and hear you if you want to reach out. But until next time, this has been Murrow Mensch, and I am signing out. Have a wonderful day, evening, night, and life. We'll see you next time.